Needless to say, I appreciated Trevor Lawrence's honesty, and I think he's going to be phenomenal in the NFL. You know, I know he took some heat today and yesterday for those comments in terms of, you know, at the end of the day saying he doesn't have that huge chip on his shoulder and he's not going to manufacture that. I mean, he was honest. Payne Manning didn't come into the league with a chip on his shoulder. Aaron Rodgers had a chip. Tom Brady had a chip. Patrick Mahomes, after he threw touchdowns against the Bears, was still counting, you know, how many picks ahead of him uh, Mitch Trubisky was. It was a chip. Trevor Lawrence, no chip. And I appreciate that. That doesn't mean he wants to kick derriere and take names. You know, the Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence combination, that's going to be dreamy in Jacksonville. Now, listen, these are good pieces. They're not great pieces. It's going to take some time. I think Trevor is going to have to deal. So is Urban Meyer, for that matter, with the fact that there are going to be moments where they're going to lose games. I mean, it's not going to be as easy as it was for Urban in, in college or Trevor Lawrence, but... Listen, I thought Lawrence, first of all, everything that he said to Michael Rosenberg was honest. That's what we ask athletes when we interview them, honesty. I, I thought his comments were spot on. He is going to be sensational. I mean, once in a lifetime kind of talent. You talk to people in the scouting community, it's John Elway, it's Andrew Luck, it's Peyton Manning, and it's Trevor Lawrence. I loved what he had to say. It goes noted that Vegas always knows. And with that as a backdrop, the odds for San Francisco's pick at number three overall have officially shifted. Justin Fields is currently the official betting favorite for the Niners pick, according to our good friends over at William Hill. And with that as a backdrop, I simply disagree. And I know it's dangerous territory, very dangerous territory, but... I just don't see it. The beauty of the Niners is they always take a clandestine approach, which is why the Mac Jones conversation was so obvious. And you wondered, maybe it's a little too obvious. The Niners always keep everything close to the best. But maybe, just maybe, that's why Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch showed up and Kyle was smiling at Justin Fields' pro day. Look, we got the picture to prove it. And Mac Jones, to me, makes sense. Mac Jones is Matt Ryan. Niners are loaded. They need to win now. Mac Jones was great at Bama. His teammates loved him. Nick Saban loved him. Kyle Shanahan will love him, too. I'm firmly in the camp of understanding why Mac Jones makes sense. But I'm struggling to see Fields for one major reason. I just can't see Justin Fields over Trey Lance for San Francisco. Mac Jones checks all the boxes. But when you talk to talent evaluators, it's Lance with a higher upside as a better fit in Kyle Shanahan's system than Fields. So if they were going to go at the end of the day with someone who's not Mac Jones, it's got to be Trey Lance. Now, here are the subject to change. Time to shine percentages for you. I'd go Mac Jones right now. We're just under two weeks away before the NFL draft. Mac Jones, 70%. Trey Lance, 27%. Kyle Pitts, 2%. I know he's a tight end, but he's the best player in the draft. And I'll go 1% for Fields, so it isn't zero. Take that, Vegas. Bill Belichick said a lot yesterday in his pre-draft news conference, and that right there is a big deal. I think this QB class is a much better class than Belichick described it. Interesting. Interesting in theory doesn't get you going and moving up from 15 to 4 in the NFL draft. I absolutely positively think the Patriots should be very interested here in Trey Lance, Mac Jones, and Justin Fields. We know Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson are going 1 and 2. The Patriots quarterback depth chart is simply inept. You cannot go into another post-Tom Brady season with nothing of substance at quarterback. Bill Belichick did a sensational job retooling his barren roster, smartly spending money appropriately in the offseason. He had to. Patriots are one of the worst rosters in the league last year. But now he needs a quarterback. The Patriots must leave draft weekend with one of those three quarterbacks or Jimmy Garoppolo. It's that simple. Otherwise, the offseason genius is going to be a waste here. I was fascinated by Belichick's commentary yesterday on a player slipping that you had in the top six or seven on your board and then 
trading up a couple of slots. When I hear that, I'll tell you what I think about. I hear Nick Saban's wide receivers. If Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddle fall out of the top 10, I could absolutely see Belichick pouncing. The receiver position for the Patriots is also very weak. And if you do that, you can still make a trade for Jimmy G. And I still very much believe he is available via trade from San Francisco. The Patriots are back, but they aren't complete. Bob Kraft was right when he ripped Belichick's draft and post-Tom Brady plan to Peter King. Now, Bill's not on the hot seat. That's crazy talk. But we all have boss pressure. The boss wasn't thrilled. Belichick must land the quarterback or else his team is going to flop while his boss watches Tom Brady march towards another Super Bowl. And congratulations to the L.A. Lakers on winning a championship, or at least it feels that way. Welcome back. Needless to say, Anthony Davis's return is going to be a huge boost to Los Angeles, and this is a huge deal. The L.A. Lakers have not been the same team sans Anthony Davis, and then after he got hurt, LeBron got hurt as well. Lakers 13-15, and 15, 28 games so far without A.D., didn't sound likely that he would play in the Utah game tomorrow afternoon or the Utah game on Monday. But when you start thinking about the Dallas game next week and Anthony Davis getting into playoff form, buckle up, Buttercup. And here's the deal. This is not one of those. And I say, okay, Lakers winning a championship. This is not one of those where you roll the balls out. AD's healthy. LeBron's healthy, and you crown the Lakers the champs. You have to respect the Utah Jazz, the Phoenix Suns, and even the Clippers. I told you last year they had a 0% chance of winning a championship. 0% chance, and I was right this year. They're a little different with Ty Lewis, the coach, and Rondo, what he's done helping Paul George. So I'm going to give the Clippers a shot here. The Brooklyn Nets, assuming they decide they want to play in July, I don't know, maybe Kyrie wants to go away for July 4th, we'll see. They can absolutely win a championship as well, but the Lakers getting Anthony Davis back and then LeBron, that means we're back talking about the Lakers winning a championship. How sweet is that for L.A.?